What's up, guys? I'm Cody Brockway, and you are back here for another episode of Brockway's Vinyl Bites, baby. Woohoo! And today, we're going to talk about, in no particular order, I have to say, this is not a ranking video by any stretch of the imagination, but we are going to be talking about my top 20 prog bands at, of all time at this point. <laughs> And I repeat, it is not a ranking list, so don't think I'm ranking these bands because there is no one better than the other. They're all amazing. My number one is solidified, and you'll see why when we get there, but anything else on this list could be number two any given day of the week. And uh, the first entry is a band that I'm actually new into but haven't been able to stop listening to. I'm really digging their art lately. Of course, it is Marillion. Yes, uh, over the last couple of months, I've been digging into their tunes. I'm really into this album, Love and Clutching at Straws. Uh, Fugazi, Holidays in Eden, uh, Brave, I've been really digging into all of it, and they are definitely worthy of, of being on my list here because I'm listening to them all the time these days. And uh, yeah, I'm right into it now. <laughs> Marillion, yes. Next up, we're going to mention Chicago. Yes, I know that you're going to say, well, Chicago's not a prog band. Well, they are very prog adjacent, and I did some, I did a lot of research looking into these things before doing the video here today. And indeed, a lot of places do list them as a prog band. We're not referring to the 80s material, we're referring to the 70s material. And, uh, you know, albums like Chicago 2, Chicago 5, Chicago 1, they're all named after the band, right? Just amazing stuff. You can't rank them, but this is my favorite Chicago album right here, Chicago 2. Um, just brilliant, brilliant stuff. So yeah, Chicago has been around my whole life and uh, seen them in concert. Love them. Next up, we're going to talk about Kansas. Love Kansas, especially this album. That This run of albums between Mask and Left Overture and Point of No Return, just brilliant stuff. Of course, that's only three albums. They've got other brilliant stuff too. But uh, my gosh, what an amazing band. American prog, doing really well in the 70s here. Uh, Kerry Livgren, what an amazing guitarist. Uh, Steve Walsh, awesome, obviously awesome vocalist. Because, you know, <laughs> Steve Hackett doesn't call you to do a guest feature with him if you suck. And uh, Kansas Rocks and Icarus, Born on the Wings of Steel, is one of my favorite, uh, favorite songs of all time. And I love this album very much. So, Kansas. Next up is Tool. Big Tool fan. Seen them a bunch of times. Uh, progressive metal at the Yin Yang. Uh, it's kind of like if Pink Floyd and King Crimson and Black Sabbath had a kid, you get Tool. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Yeah, seen them live twice. I'll go see them again in the drop of a dime. I'm actually going to go see Danny Carey from Tool play with the Beat Project, which is the Adrian Ballou, Stephen, uh, Steve Vai, sorry, Danny Carey and Tony Levin doing uh, King Crimson music from the 80s. So that's awesome. But, so that'll be my third time seeing Danny. Love Tool, Lateralis, Fear Inoculum, 10,000 Days, just brilliantly moving music, very powerful. Uh, very proggy but accessible at the same time while staying heavy. It's a it's a great it's a great combo, really, truly is. Opeth, whether it's extreme death metal Opeth or the the clean vocal, um, <laughs> the, the clean vocal proggy Opeth of the last fifteen years, I'm into all of it. Everything from Blackwater Park to Still Life to Incod of Anenum to Pale Communion, just great stuff. I think Michael Ackerfeld is an absolute genius, and we are lucky to have him. I'm going to see them later this year. That's going to be a lot of fun. Of course, we'll do a video about that when it happens. But yeah, Opeth, uh, just a, a killer, killer gang of musicians in this band. Always. Even, you know, even throughout their sort of different lineup changes, it's always been great. They've always been a super talented group. Love Opeth. And we got Haken, a band that I recently saw in concert and uh, just totally blown by, blown away by them. Um, anyone that I introduce Haken to immediately, you can watch their brain get blown out of their head, <laughs> like physically, like watching them, you know, watching them listen to it, going, "What is that? It's Haken, my man." Hey, Mike Portnoy doesn't call you his favorite modern day prog band for nothing, man. Haken is where it's at. They're heavy, they're melodic, they're beautiful, they're wonderful. Oh, yeah, love Haken. And of course, we've got, I'm going to mention 
two, I mean, because they're both connected here, right? But we got Porcupine Tree and Stephen Wilson. I mean, good God, what a mastermind this guy is. Yes, that is signed by him. That's his newest album, The Harmony Codex. Really like this record. Uh, this is more of an electronic uh, rock kind of feel with jazz. <laughs> and here's some classic Porcupine Tree here. Dead Wing from 2005. I just think it's awesome. Not everything Steven does is like 10 out of 10 amazing, but it's it, there's a big kudos for taking the leap and doing what he does. And he's kind of like the modern day David Bowie, where it's like he's always searching for what's next. You know, he doesn't stay in the same place for too long. Uh, he's going for the next thing. And that's really appreciable, especially, you know, as, as a fan who, who wants to see your artists go into different directions. You know, he, you know, he, and he does it so well. 9 out of 10 times. So, love Stephen Wilson, Porcupine Tree, one of my favorite bands. Oh, just adore them. And next up, the super group, Transatlantic. I love these guys. Neil Morse, Roy Nestolt, Peter Wavis from Marillion, of course, and Mike Portnoy. Yeah, just the dream team, man. And unfortunately, this band is sort of back on hiatus now. But now that Mike is back in Dream Theater, of course, rightfully so with that, right? But I wish that we see more music from them in the future. This is just an absolutely incredible band. Every album is amazing, top to bottom. And uh, even the live ones like this, just fantastic. Uh, of course, this is the three CD and Blu-ray edition of The Final Flight, live at Olympia Theater. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. If you haven't heard any Transatlantic and you're somehow following Brockway's Final Bites and don't know who Transatlantic is, I would recommend you go check them out right away. One of my absolute favorites, and I wish that I could get to see them live one day. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Another one, we're going back to the 70s, is Gentle Giant. Amazing. There's no band that sounds like Gentle Giant, and that's, you know, that <laughs> is really worthy of mentioning that. Is that, like, when a band, when you come out with your own sound and nobody else sounds like you at all. There is something to that, man. Like, the talent that it that it takes to make up Gentle Giant is absolutely unbelievable, and the songs are just <laughs> really out of left field, but they're well-written, well-composed, well-done. I uh, love what they do. I even like the, the last couple albums where it's more of a sort of streamlined, sort of more poppy approach. I like those, too. Yeah, Gentle Giant, great, great, great. And next up here today, at number 11, even though I repeat, this is not a ranking video. So next up, we got Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. What a brilliant band. Keith Emerson from The Nice, Greg Lake from King Crimson, and uh, Carl Palmer from the, from the Atomic Rooster, and The Crazy World of Arthur Brown. Brilliant band. Their first six releases are just solid prog. The most classic, some of the most essential prog albums that you could ever imagine. And uh, there's a lot to that, you know. That's just... That, that's great that they didn't falter. Like, there's six releases that came out in, like, five years of each other. And they're all literally 10 out of 10 prog albums. Just amazing. And this is one of them. Uh, of course, this CD I'm holding up is Pictures on Exhibition. I actually met Carl Palmer, and he couldn't have been any nicer. Uh, one of my favorite drummers of all time. So, yeah. Number 11 on today's video is Emerson, Lincoln Palmer. Next up, we're cracking into the supposed top 10. Jethro Tull. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. If this was a ranking video, they'd be up a lot higher than number 10. But, uh, you know, Jethro Tull, amazing, amazing, amazing. Ian Anderson, Martin Barr, Barrymore Barlow. What a dream team, right? I wish Ian Anderson would kind of come to his senses on that, but uh, <laughs> who am I to say, right? I'm just the fan. Great band, and uh, this is in a classic run of albums where the band literally did no wrong, say all the way from stand-up to A. There's like, there's like 10 albums in there that are just brilliant all the way through. And, you know, <laughs> if your band has 10 great albums, that kind of solidifies the fact that they're a great band. Jethro Tull. Next up, we're kind of doing a two for it, number nine. We're going to talk about Steve Hackett and Peter Gabriel. Of course, you might know them from a, from a band that they were in together way back in the 70s. We're going to talk about that in a little while. Steve Hackett, one of the absolute most efficient and proficient musicians of our generation. Uh, of course, he's been playing for well, since Genesis 1971, right? And he's still got a new solo album pretty much every year or two. 
Uh, actually, about three years ago, he put out two solo albums in the same year. He is consistently touring every year. Multiple tours, sometimes at the same time, especially after COVID. He had two tours going. Just brilliant, and he's one of the nicest people I've ever had the pleasure of meeting. Uh, Steve Hackett. Brilliant. I've seen him seven times, and he's got like 30 solo albums out. He's just, he's on fire. He's unstoppable. And the even as he gets older, there's no slowing down for Steve, and I love that. And of course, we have his cohort, Peter Gabriel. This is also uh, Peter Gabriel's new album. Just like this is Steve's new album, The Circus and the Night Whale. This came out about two, three months ago, and this came out last year, 2023. Amazing. Amazing. I mean, what's going on here with these guys? These are both the guys that left Genesis in the mid-70s, and they're still out putting out amazing music. This is for Peter's first solo album in 21 years, and all eight of his studio albums are just brilliant. They are 10 out of 10, pop rock, art pop, art rock, prog rock, whatever you want to call them. Just fantastic. He's one of the most innovative musicians of our time. Him and Steve Hackett both are two of the most innovative musicians of all time. Not just our time, just ever. Just totally brilliant. And uh, I feel elated to be able to say that I've seen both of them in concert. I've met and interviewed Steve Hackett. And uh, I've lived, just like you have, on the same earth as them. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Next up, at number eight in today's video... Dream Theater. <laughs> you can't rank this stuff, man. <laughs> it's just all so good. Dream Theater have been a life-changing band for me. I love heavy music. Of course, we're going to be talking about more metal in the future on the channel. Um, but I love heavy music, and especially when it meets uh, this wonderfully done progressive rock. You get Dream Theater. Mike Portnoy, Mike Mangini, John Petrucci, John My Young, James Labrie, Jordan Rudess, Kevin Moore, Derek Sherinian, all the guys that have been in the Dream Theater camp before are just amazing, and uh, they've all served a great purpose within this band. Yeah, hard pressed to find a Dream Theater record that I actively don't like. <laughs> so that's Dream Theater. Next up, we got coming in at number seven today Rush. My Canadian heroes love me some Rush. Even got this signed album from all signed from all three Rush members, which is rare because Neil didn't usually do uh, you know meet and greets and signings and things like that. But uh, there's his signature right there. There's Getty Lee, and there's Alex Lifeson. Amazing, and I love this album, Power Windows, by the way. Just great stuff. Great stuff. Yeah, they kind of put Toronto on the map for prog rock. And uh, Toronto is only like an hour from me. Of course, Toronto is an hour from Toronto. If you know anything about Ontario. <laughs> this album changed my life back in high school. Uh, this, Moving Pictures. And I, I had a friend at the time who was super into Rush. And because uh, I was a... Zeppelin was like my number one at the time. And he said, you got to listen to Rush. And then so I put on... I, put, I started getting into some Rush. And I got this album, got Moving Pictures. And I was like... Oh man, what did you just do to me, man? <laughs> I was already into Prague a little bit, kind of with Yes, because I grew up with Yes and Super Tramp and, and Queen and such at the time. But uh, Rush really blew open some doors for me, man. <laughs> Great stuff. Great stuff. At number six in today's video, we've got Pink Floyd. I just recently did a feature over on the Prague Corner with Scott Lade and friends. Uh, on one of his Sunday prog streams, and we talked about our top favorite Pink Floyd tunes. So uh, that was a lot of fun. Pink Floyd had been one of my favorite bands since I was just a young child, and I first heard their cover, or, sorry, I heard Korn's cover of Another Brick in the Wall. Then after that, my dad showed me the movie, and it was all downhill from there, man. I've loved Pink Floyd for years, saw Roger Waters in concert a couple times, saw Nick Mason's Saucer Full of Secrets band, hope to see David Gilmour at some point if he ever comes to Canada. Uh, again, that would be a lot of fun to go see him for my first time. But yeah, Pink Floyd, you know, Metal, Dark Side of the Moon, Animals, Sasha Full of Secrets, Momentary Lapse of Reason, The Wall, Wish You Were Here, oh, Division Bell, so much great music. And uh, they don't have an album that I don't like. I'm not a big fan of The Endless River, but is that really considered a Pink Floyd album? I mean, I guess it is, but Division Bell is kind of the last Pink Floyd album. And so with that, I love every Pink Floyd album. What do we got next? Ah, coming in at number five in today's video, we got Queen. Yes, I know some of you are probably saying, 
Oh, that's not Prague. Well, it actually is. <laughs> There's no other way to put this. This band had metal, had pop, had blues, had jazz, had some hints of country in some of their music, uh, and then sometimes it was all on one album. <laughs> uh, just brilliant. Uh, you know, Sheer Heart Attack, Queen 2, Night at the Opera, Day at the Races. All five members, sorry, all four members of Queen, Brian May, Roger Taylor, John Deacon, and Freddie Mercury, all four members wrote a top ten hit for the band. That's a pretty cool feat. And, uh, you can't tell me that this and A Night at the Opera and Queen 2 are not Prague albums. I will fight anyone that says otherwise. Of course, I'm not going to fight anyone. I'm all love here. It's all about the music here on Brockway's Vinyl Bites. This is what we do. This is how we are. Uh, oh. Number four for today is King Crimson. Yeah, every lineup of King Crimson has been solid. Of course, I love, I particularly love any of the ones with Bill Bruford in it. Um, but before Bill Bruford, you, you had guys like Michael Giles and stuff, and they all served the band just amazing. Even if they were in for one album or ten albums, everyone that has been in this band has been a very solid musician, all handpicked by uh, Robert Fripp, of course. And uh, it's all solid. It's all great music. It's all well thought out, well done, well composed. I mean... Yeah, just amazing. I saw the 2019 lineup of King Crimson with Gavin Harrison, Bill Rieflin, and Pat Mastelato on drums uh, a couple years ago. Actually, it was just the year before Bill Rieflin passed away. R.I.P. to you, brother. Great drummer. Uh, it was 2019, so five years ago now. And uh, yeah, great band. And I'm happy that, like I said before, I'm going to see the Beat Project. That's going to be a lot of fun to see that in concert. Next up, oh yes, I think you, I think you know what's probably going to be mentioned here now, but. Uh, we got Yes. <laughs> One of my absolute favorite bands of all time. If you had to send me off to a desert island and I could, you know, like I could only bring a certain amount of albums from certain bands or whatever, Yes would definitely make my list. Absolutely love them. They've been one of my top favorite bands since I was born, thanks to my dad, who's a diehard Yes fan. Just amazing. Just amazing. I mean, Chris Squire, I literally cried when he died. Yes, no shame in admitting such things. I absolutely cried when Chris Squire passed away. He is my favorite bassist of all time. Although, of course, there's so many, but Chris is my number one. And uh, always has been, always will be. John Anderson, Bill Bruford, Alan White, Rick Wakeman, Jeff Downs, Billy Sherwood, all the people that have been associated with Yes, current and past, are all amazing musicians in their own right so thanks to those guys for creating a great soundtrack to my life and uh what do we got next oh yeah we're down to the top we're down to the final two that were mentioned in here today in the video frank zappa absolutely is prog it is jazz it is rock it is blues it is country it is all these things it's anything that he felt like making it is avant it is avant-garde music uh to the finest degree uh frank zappa just a a really a world-class musician. Everyone who's ever been in his band is just amazing. And I love all his albums. I do. I love Frank. It just anything that he had to say musically was always so interesting. There's never a dull moment in Frank or his huge catalog of music, which is still, there's new stuff coming out that he had in his vaults. And uh, there's new stuff coming out all the time, left, right, and center. And I'm loving the live stuff that the estate has been putting out. It's just been brilliant. Frank Zappa. Yeah, man, he's the man. And my favorite band of all time. You knew, even though this, like I said before, this is not a ranking list, you know this band is going to be number one for me, ranking or no ranking. It is Genesis. Tony Banks, Phil Collins, Mike Rutherford, Steve Hackett, Peter Gabriel. What can I say, man? <laughs> if you've been following this channel for any length of time, you know how much I love Genesis. Um, I love pretty much every Genesis album. And uh, the ones that I love, I love. And like, they've got probably, they've probably got 12 out of 15 albums that, like, they probably have 12 albums that I just love out of 15 albums in total. And so <laughs> that solidifies the fact that they're amazing and they are my favorite band of all time. Although it is, it is always hard to rank bands, which is something I never do. I know that Genesis is my number one band ever. Them and the Beatles. 
Oh, so much great music and so little time. I'm so thankful for all the artists that we've had who have graced us with all this music, and it is not meant to be ranked, so that's why I don't do ranking videos and things like that. It's just not me, because my favorites can typically change by the day, and uh, music touches me very deeply, and it moves me so much, and uh, it is my whole life, you know, obviously being a drummer and stuff, being a drummer and such, it's what I do. Music is not even just what I do, actually, it's who I am. So I have a feeling that many of you watching this video will probably feel the same, but uh, yeah, so much great music, you know. I didn't mention, you know, because people probably don't consider the Beatles to be a prog band, but they are absolutely in my top five favorite bands of all time. Uh, Iron Maiden, the same. They're in my top five of all time. Metallica, for sure. Um, but the, we're talking about prog bands, you know. We're trying to keep it prog with a capital P here today. So I want to say thank you so much for watching today's video. Much love. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. If you liked what you saw today, don't forget to like and comment. I hope to hear from you down in the comments. I love chatting with you guys. We'll see you guys next time. We'll see you real soon. Of course, we have the we have the Saturday stream coming up, so definitely pop on for that. At 12 noon Eastern, we're talking about our top 10 Queen songs. Yes. So don't miss that. That'll be right here on Brockway's Vinyl Bites. We're going to have Martin Popoff come back for that. Uh, the great famed Canadian journalist, author, rock, metal freak like me, you know. <laughs> so that's going to be a lot of fun. Thanks for watching today. We'll see you next time. Don't forget to rock on, baby. Yeah. Ha <laughs> ha.